Hello, and welcome to a very special bonus episode of the This Awesome Life podcast. My name is Brandon, and I have an awesome life. So do you. What we know is that we all have an awesome life, and it's all found in the stories that we share and in the experience that we have. And so today, uh, I wanted to start a very special episode today, a little bonus episode, what I'm calling Building Blocks to an Awesome Life. Uh, A lot of us wonder what it's like to actually have an awesome life. How do you have an awesome life? Why are you so confident that your life is so awesome? And I'm going to tell you. Normally, what we would do is we would have a conversation with a friend of mine where they would share part of their story, and we would talk about all the awesomeness in our lives. It's not about being flashy. It's just about appreciating where we're at and who we get to do this life with. So again, thank you for being on this bonus episode, Building Blocks for an Awesome Life. As I was thinking about this episode and thinking about what does it take to live an awesome life, there were five key building blocks that I came up with. I'm going to talk through them today, and hopefully they will help you to recognize that you have an awesome life, or if you still feel like you don't, help you make some tweaks into those areas of your life that will help it begin to to feel awesome or begin to be awesome. Again, we all have an awesome life. It's not about being flashy. It's not about jet setting or having all the latest things. It's just about the stories that we live. So what does it take? It takes five things, like I said. Purpose, values, stories, community, and then the ability to put all that stuff together to make your awesome life. So let's jump into purpose. Building block number one, purpose. Uh, That's a big word. Purpose is one of those words that uh, has been misused a lot. It's been uh, created into this big thing that has to be uh, perfect. You have to know exactly what your purpose is. It has to be very niche. It has to be as specific as uh, helping people who weigh 179 pounds lose the three last pounds that they want to get down to 176 pounds while doing a very specific type of CrossFit workout that involves four different timers going off at the same time, all while wearing red shoes. Uh, People think that purpose has to be that defined, that specific, but it doesn't. Uh, Some people are born knowing exactly what they want to do with their life or or what they want to do when they grow up. They come in uh, as a three-year-old, and they're like, I'm going to be a firefighter, or I'm going to be a doctor, Um, and and they grow up and they do. But more and more, those situations are just extremely rare, extremely rare. For most people, we have to find our purpose. We have to figure out what it is, And and we have this situation in life where if we don't know exactly what it is, we feel lost, we feel purposeless, we feel directionless, we feel adrift. Uh, And we get to a place in our lives where we look back and we realize we've been drifting, quote unquote, for so long uh, that that it's too late. It's too late to live our purpose. Uh, And there's a very deep seated fear uh, that says, if I don't figure out exactly what I'm supposed to do with my whole life uh, very early on, then I'm going to amount to nothing. Uh, we, there's too much pressure on this word purpose. Uh, we think we have to manufacture it, and we think our purpose has to be good enough. We can't just uh, you know, live our life doing something normal, something regular. We feel like it has to be this big, grand uh, adventure. We get uncomfortable with this idea of purpose. We get uncomfortable because we think we have to have it all figured out. Here's the thing. Let me help you for a second. I want to demystify this concept of purpose. Purpose is simply this. It's simply living the life you were created to live. And, uh, you know, I say I'm going to demystify it, and then I say something like that, and you're like, what do you mean by that? What, how do I know the life that I was meant to live? And there, here comes the easy part. Ephesians 2.10 says, We are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus, to do good works which God prepared in advance for us to do. That's it. That's your purpose. That's the whole thing. That is what you are called to do. That is the life you are called to live. You're called to be God's image. You're called to be a representation of him. You are called to do the good works that he has prepared in advance for you to do. What are those good works? Well, the truth is those good works are to simply represent him well, to love him, and to love others. That's it. Our purpose in life as image bearers of God is to love him and love others. Full stop. That's it. If you're lacking purpose, if you feel like there's something missing in your life as far as purpose goes, then I would argue that there's something off between you and the one who gives that purpose. I would say if you are lacking purpose, it's because you are lacking closeness with your creator. 
you're lacking intimacy with God, you're lacking uh, proximity, you're distant from Him, something is off because your purpose is simply to make Him known, to make His love known. That's it. It's easy. There it is. Purpose. Demystified. All you have to do is have a relationship with Him. You'll have a life of purpose. The second thing that I want to talk about today that's a building block of an awesome life is the concept of values. Values are so important. If you want to live an awesome life, you have to be living out your own personal set of unique values. Let me ask you this question. What are your top five? What are your values? What are the things that matter most to you? Maybe you're confused by that question. You're like, well, in what way? What do you mean? What are my top five what? Songs, movies, foods? etc. No, your top five, the things that you care the most about. For me, those things are faith, relationships, integrity, leadership, and adventure. Those five things, faith, relationships, integrity, leadership, and adventure. You don't have to copy mine. You shouldn't. You should have your own. When things, uh, when these things are active in my life, when I'm living out those five things, when I get to flex those muscles often, when I get to celebrate my faith regularly, when I get to pour into relationships regularly, when I know I'm being who God's created me to be, when I have integrity, when I'm, when I'm being transparent and authentic with people, when I'm able to lead well, and when I'm able to have fun and, and do things that I've never done before, or have some adventures. During those times, when I'm doing those things, my life feels awesome. I mean, undeniably awesome. Things can go wrong. Things can uh, set me back. Things can make me sad. But at the end of the day, when those five things are present in my life, it's awesome. My life is awesome. And I feel like I'm living well. I feel like I'm living up to who God's called me to be because he's planted those things in my heart. He's made those things important to me. He has it's crafted me in such a way that those five things resonate so well. So what are yours? And if you don't know, you, you have to figure that out. You're not going to live an awesome life if your values aren't well-defined and if you're not living them out. You're not going to live an awesome life if you're not living out your values. It's just how you were created to be. It's like trying to use a spoon as a knife. It doesn't work. Uh, Spoons are great. They have a purpose. They have things that they are very functional to accomplish. can't eat soup with a knife, but you can't cut steak with a spoon. Uh, You have to live out your purpose and live out your values. So I would highly encourage you to identify your values and start living them out. Uh, I have a great resource for that. It's called Finding You. You can get it on Amazon uh, as an ebook. You can purchase a copy, a paperback. They'll send it to you. Or you can get it for free as a PDF, a downloadable PDF, by subscribing to the This Awesome Life blog. All that information will be in the show notes at the end. Um, But I highly, highly, highly recommend that you uh, identify your values. And that's not, that's not a promotion. This, uh, this book came out of a practice of me identifying my own values. This was years ago. It was such a life-changing experience that uh, I, I had to get it out there. So again, that's why I offer it for free. You can get it on my, uh, over at the This Awesome Life blog, or you can purchase it from Amazon. Like I said, full of great ex- exercises. It'll help you identify. It'll help you communicate your values. It'll help you live them out. It's an amazing resource. I personally have used it. Values are so critical to who we are. Uh, Values help us live the life that God has crafted us to to live. And when those things are on, you're going to be on. When those things are off, you're going to be off. And if you don't know what they are, you're more likely to be accidentally off than you are to be accidentally on mission. All right, next thing. So we've talked about purpose. We've talked about values. Now I want to talk about stories. Stories are what the This Awesome Life podcast and blog, the whole concept of This Awesome Life is all about. It's all based around stories. I started collecting my stories a while back. I had this goal uh, to, to have a list of 100 stories. And the reason I, I chose stories is because when I started writing uh, my blog, before it was called This Awesome Life, I was constantly trying to find content to place on the blog and I would burn out I'd stop writing. It would be years. And then I'd say, oh, I should start doing that again. And again, I'd start writing and burn out. Uh, and so I finally decided to look back and see what my best content was about. And my best content, the, my favorite blog posts that I've ever written are always a personal story about me. Usually involves me getting hurt or doing something dumb uh, that other people are able to laugh at. So it always involves a personal story. And then it always kind of ties back 
to something that I learned through that story. And that is, again, the whole concept of this podcast, the whole concept of the blog. It's all about personal stories. Because here's, here's why. All of those personal stories add up to make us who we are. All of the small things in our life, all of the little moments, the small experiences, they all add up to make us who we are. I mean, honestly, I, some of the stories that I've written about are so random, uh, I, and I don't remember, I don't know why I remember them. I believe this because God just reminds me of them so that I can laugh and, and learn and, and be more like Him. And so what I started doing was I started collecting those stories. Every time a story popped into my mind, whether I could immediately relate it to some life lesson or not, I wrote it down. So on my phone, I have a, a, a note called the story file, and it has tens of stories in there right now. Again, I said my goal is 100. At the time of this recording, uh, I've got 57 in there on my way to getting to 100. And when I get to 100, I'll probably shoot for 200. I want to be the kind of person that has uh, just a collection of stories, a collection of reminders of when and how God has shown up in my life. That's why I do it. It's honestly, the story file is not about the content. It's about remembering. Because when we remember our stories, when we remember uh, where God has taken us or where, what he's brought us through or what he's allowed us to experience or the relationships he's allowed us to build or the stories that he's allowed us to share with others, when we remember that, we're going to continue to live forward in that direction and to the direction of who we're supposed to, supposed to be. I, I have to remember who I am. I have to remember where I came from and have to remember what I've come through. So often we get discouraged in our life because we look ahead and we think, man, I've got so far to go before I hit this goal. I've got so far to go before I become this type of person. I've got so far to go before I can whatever, fill in the blank. But when we remember our stories, when we write those things down, when we commit to celebrating them, we don't just see how far we have to go. We're able to recognize how far we've come. And that's a big deal. That's a big deal because so often we get stuck uh, seeing the gap between where we are and where we're trying to go. But we forget to look back and see how much we've closed the gap between where we were and where we are today. See, my stories, my story file has it all. It's got the highs, it's got the lows, it's got things in between. It's got moments of great joy and it's got moments of deep, deep sorrow. Because I know in all of that, in the moments of joy, in the moments of sorrow, God was leading me somewhere. But if I don't look back, if I don't remember those stories, if I don't celebrate them, if I don't take the time to allow God to speak to me through them, then they're not going to be valuable to me. They're not going to help me get where I need to go. Every story, every experience, every moment of our lives, it molds us, it shapes us, and it builds us into who God has called us to be. They help us live the purpose that we talked about earlier. They help our stories. When we remember our stories, they give us the tools that we need to love God and love others. When we remember our stories, we're able to help people navigate uh, who are navigating the same stories. We're able to help people walk through their hard times that, when we've been through the same ones. We're able to have greater empathy. We're able to have greater love. We're able to have greater joy. And all of that comes from the stories that we share and the stories that we're willing to remember. So they help us uh, live our purpose. They help us love God and love others. So let me ask you this. What stories are you telling? And what stories are you capturing? What are the stories that play on a loop in your mind? Because too often, they're the negative ones. They're the hurtful ones. They're the ones that cause us pain. And those stories are important. We have to remember them because we've gotten through them. We've gotten to the other side. We've been able to, uh, to survive and grow and become more resilient and have more grit. We have to remember those stories. But we also need to remember the stories of joy, the silly little random ones, the ones where you tell your friends how you fell off of a porch or the ones where you tell your friends about a crazy dream that you had where you, and ended up waking up under the bed because you thought the ceiling was caving in. Those are both in my story file, by the way. 
that's what it's all about. We have to live this, relive those stories, remember those stories so we can move forward. You see, as I talk about Scripture, Scripture is filled with people who absolutely bomb their purpose because they forgot to remember their stories. I'm going to say that again. Scripture is filled with people who bomb their purpose because they forgot their stories. And I don't want that for you. I don't want that for me. I don't want to forget my story and end up bombing my purpose. Look at the nation of Israel over and over and over again. They forgot who God was and what he had done for them. And it didn't take long. You look at them wandering through the deserts of Egypt, and it was a couple of days, and they were complaining about food just after they got water from a rock. Scripture says their shoes never wore out. Their clothes didn't wear out over all those years. And God was providing for them, and yet over and over and over, they forgot who he was. They forgot his power. They forgot to lean into it. And as a result, they bombed their purpose. They missed it. An entire nation of people, an entire generation of people died in the desert because they forgot who God was, and they forgot who they were as a result of that. They, They weren't celebrating their stories. They were missing it. They were forgetting And that happens over and over and over again. And it's the same for me. It's the same for you. When we forget the things that God has done, it's easy for us to miss the mark and bomb our purpose. Next one, community. I want to talk about community. One of my values is relationships. And so for me, it's easy to put this one on the list. I want to be the kind of person that has high value relationships. I want to be the person that has highly authentic relationships. The reason that that relationships is on my list of values is because I know that community makes life awesome. If you have really, really strong, really authentic community, it's really hard to not have an awesome life because those are the kind of people that show up when you forget that your life's awesome. Those are the kind of people that that are part of the stories that you're supposed to be collecting. Those are the people that co-author this incredible story called life. And it all starts in community. Scripture tells us that too. Ecclesiastes says that two are better than one because they can work together and accomplish more than they could alone. It says the cord of three strands is not easily broken. In the New Testament, the book of Acts talks about how community allows us to care for one another and allows us to grow the kingdom. And again, we're back to that purpose, loving God and loving others. That happens best in community. It happens best when we surround ourselves with people that love us, with people that know us with people that we can be transparent and authentic with. That is how we love God and love others is through community. Community leads us to purpose. So who's around you? Who's building you up? Who's helping you take next steps? What's your community look like? See how this all fits together? Our purpose would encourage us to choose values, which are lived through our stories, which are supported by our community. You see, these things uh, all add up to this awesome life. When When we have all of these things happening, That is what an awesome life looks like. It's those things, when we put them all together, that equals awesome life. By their powers combined, better than Captain Planet. That's an awesome life. So let me ask you today, as you're listening to this, what are you missing? As we talk to those five building blocks of an awesome life, what is it that your life is missing? Is it purpose? Do you need to reconnect with God in a better way? Do you need to reconnect with God so that He can love you so that he can lead you to a place where you are comfortable and confident knowing that your ultimate purpose is to just love him and love others. And how you do that on a day-to-day is completely up to you. Love God, love others. That's your purpose. That's why you're here. That's why you're on this earth. Is that what you're missing? Man, rest in the truth that purpose comes from him. Purpose comes from God. And he simply asks you to love him and love others. Maybe your purpose is on, but your values are off. Maybe you don't know what you value, or maybe you do know what you value and you just haven't been living it out. I want to encourage you to do the work. Do the work. Do the work for yourself. Do the work for your family. Do the work for your legacy, because when you are living out your values, you're going to be the best you that you can be. You'll be the best husband, the best father. You'll be the best mother, the best wife, the best daughter, the best son, the best brother, the best sister, the best friend you can be when you're living out your values. Do the work. Identify what matters most to you and live a life that's characterized by those things. Maybe, maybe you need to see more value in your story. You know, as a, as a youth pastor, 
uh, for years and years and years and still to this day, I work with youth ministry. Um, it's often that I run into a student that feels like they don't have a story worth telling. They've never done anything crazy. They've never done anything uh, remarkable. They've never done anything noteworthy in their opinion. And they say, I just don't, I don't have a story to tell. I don't have a testimony. I don't have anything to bring to the table. I don't have any value to add. And man, it breaks my heart. It breaks my heart every time I hear someone say that. And if that's your opinion of your own story, it breaks my heart for you because your story is valuable. You have a story that's worth telling. You have a story that's worth sharing. You have stories that have helped you to become who you are and will help others become who they were meant to be if you share them, if you tell them. So I want to encourage you now, as you start to remember stories, maybe you've even thought of a few as I'm saying this, write them down. Find a way to capture those stories and then find a way to share them and celebrate them. Our stories are who we are, plain and simple. Our stories are our identity. They are the things that make us who we are. Without stories, what are we? You know, I have a friend who said um, that often people say the difference between humans and animals is the ability to use tools. As humans, we have the ability to use tools and animals can't. That's not true. He said, there are plenty of animals out there that use tools. If you think about birds building nests, they, they at least use raw materials, right? But even if you think about apes and other species of gorilla, they literally use tools. They'll use rocks to break stuff. They'll use it to cut things. There are animals that use tools, and some of those animals are actually more proficient with tools than humans are. Really, that's what separates things with opposable thumbs from things that don't. But what makes humans separate from animals is actually our ability to share stories. Stories is what separates us from the animals. All of our stories matter. They're all important. They help us pass down the knowledge that we've received. They help us to expand on the knowledge that we've received. They help us to expand our experiences and our worldviews, and they help us become who we are. Your story matters. Your story is important. And there's somebody out there that needs to hear it. If you think your story is not valuable, I want to encourage you to change that narrative. I want to encourage you to change your mindset, and I want to encourage you to start sharing your stories whenever you can, and whenever you can. And finally, maybe, maybe you need some community to lift you up. Maybe you're in a place where you feel alone. You're in a place where you feel isolated, and uh, you're in a place where you feel hopeless. If that's the case, get connected reach out, get connected at your church, at uh, a club or a sport or something like that, a serve opportunity. Man, when we do hard things together, when people serve together, when they meet a need together, that, man, that binds us together so quickly. Community is found when we, when we build others up and when we work together. I want to encourage you to find some community, get connected, whether it's a church or somewhere like that, build community and Bonus points, build community around your purpose and your values. Find like-minded people. Find people that have the same values as you so that you can work on solving the same problems together. Find people who are purpose-driven and, and trying to live in love like Jesus did or point others towards him. That's when real community happens. But find people that you can be authentic and vulnerable with that will share the load with you, that will lift you up. Because when we put all these things together, they're powerful. They're powerful, and they become the magnifying glass through which we can recognize that we have an awesome life. That's it. Those are the blocks. That's what we need to have an awesome life. We need purpose. That comes from God. Love Him, love others. We need values. Those things are written on our hearts. We just need to find them. We need to dig for them. We need to do the work. We need stories. We've got them. We all have stories. We just need to celebrate them, capture them, share them, utilize our stories for the amazing value that they have. And we need community. We need people around us who are going to push us forward, who are going to help us accomplish great things, and who are going to love us when we mess up, who are going to help us fall forward when we do stumble, uh, and who are going to carry us across the finish line when we run, as we run our race. I hope that this helps. I hope that you can recognize that you do have an awesome life. I hope you see that you have a purpose. I hope you see that when you live out your values, you get to be the best version of you that exists. 
and uh, I hope that you will celebrate your stories and connect to community. Thanks for joining me today on this bonus episode of This Awesome Life. I want to encourage you to check out the links in the show notes to find resources, connect with me on social media, or to subscribe to the This Awesome Life blog. Uh, Again, if you want the values book, it's called Finding You. You can find it on Amazon uh, or you can get it for free by subscribing to the This Awesome Life blog. Both of those links will be in the show notes below. And again, thank you for being here. We will see you next time.